Before we start the episode, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe for more spooky content every week, just like this episode. On to the show! Hello, my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes, and welcome to Monster Planet, where I talk about a monster's brief history, how it affected our modern world today, and how media portrays the monster. I'm your host, Nicholas Reed, and today's monster is not your average spirit. The monster of the day is Ireland's nature spirit, the Puka. They are considered to be bringers of good and bad fortune. They could help or hinder rural and marine communities, and Puka are shape changers. You can take the appearance of goats, rabbits, or horses, or really any other creature. Fairy mythologist Thomas Keatley wrote that notions regarding it are very vague, and in a brief description gives an account collected by Crocker from a boy living near Killarney that old people used to say that the pukas were very numerous long ago, were wicked-minded, black-looking, bad things. They could come in the form of wild colts with chains hanging about them. Children were warned not to eat overripe blackberries because this was a sign that the puka had befouled them. In stark contrast, it is considered to be helpful to farmers by Lady Wilde, who tells the following tale. A farmer's son named Phaedreg one day noticed the invisible presence of the puka brushing by and called out to him, offering a coat. It appeared in the guise of a young bull, told him to come to the old mill at night. From that time onward, the pukas came secretly at night and performed all the work of milling the sacks of corn into flour. There are some stories of pukas being bloodthirsty, vampire-like creatures. Other stories say some are man-eating beings that hunt down, kill, and eat their victims. They can take many forms, but most often choose the form of a black horse with glowing golden eyes and flowing mane. As the power of human speech has been known to give advice and lead people away from harm, but it also enjoys confusing and terrifying humans. Despite this, it is still considered benevolent. There are a few agricultural traditions associated with the monster. During the Harvest Festival of Samhain, anything that remains in the field is considered fairy blasted, and hence inedible. And in other regions, farmers leave out a part of the crop to satiate the creature. The puka inspires fear in some regions and respect or admiration in others, depending on their nature. But the representation has grown, but they still remain relatively obscure creatures but maybe that's just how they like it. The puka appears in quite a few forms of media, though you might not have realized it, as they tend to only be mentioned in passing, or their forms vary widely from the traditional ones. In Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, the character Puck is actually based on the puka, and in The Spiderwick Chronicles by Holly Black, it is a type of harmless fairy that the Grace children encounter speaks in riddles, and is similar to the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. The Puka also appears in CG Project Red's The Witcher 3 as a more powerful version of the regular Necker monsters. And in the animated series Sword Art Online, Puka is one of nine races that the Elfheim Online players get sorted into. Through most forms of media, the only thing that connects these creatures to the original story is the name and sometimes the powers. That's all the time I had for you ghouls and ghoulettes. I hope you have a wonderful day, and remember, if you see overripe blackberries, don't eat them.